Okay, here we are at the start of the 31 p.m. turn <clears throat> for the Axis, and things are going um, just further and further south for the Axis. <laughs> it is not going well for them. Um, if you remember last time, the Allies were able to make some daring moves in the previous turns, and as a result, were able to both, uh, even though they got dislodged from the Fayed Pass, they were able to cut off supply there by holding that point, and they were able to have their armored car come over here and cut off supply to the south for the Axis. Meaning that essentially all the Axis forces, unless they can reopen this route to the east, which I assume is the only real feasible one they can do, um, they're going to be in a world of hurt. So this stack is already out of supply. That's going to reduce their movement by half. It's going to make their ER ratings terrible. It's going to make things very difficult from now on. This, went, this stack went into emergency supply because it was able to draw supply last turn. So there's some hope that we can maybe um, shift some forces over. Maybe some of these can come over here and we can start to begin to reopen supply. Uh, it would be very, very crucial. There is only three turns left, but uh, it would be helpful to get that reopened. And then to make things even worse, this, these stacks here just went into emergency supply because they were out of supply due to interdiction and that went away. And so then you check their real supply status and this is the first time they're quote unquote out of supply so they go to emergency. They were disrupted though and failed their ER check because they're in an enemy zone of control. Uh, and so they stay disrupted. So that means they're in a, they're also <laughs> in a world of hurt. Uh, disruption is terrible. I believe it reduces your ER rating by two. Um, you can't do any combat reactions, no retreats, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's just not good. It's actually pretty terrible. So Axis have um, quite a lot to be thinking about here. What we're going to do, the Allies look at great position. They look very strong right now. Um, I'm not so sure they're going to be able to take Fayed Pass. We'll see. That could still be very iffy for the Allies, but they've definitely uh, shifted the momentum back to their favor. Uh, the Axis forces are just going to have to really figure out what to do. I think I think my plan is basically going to be taking these stacks, even though now they're reduced to half movement, right? Which is just a pain in the Batinsky. Um, because I believe if you're out of supply, you can't do overrun either. So it's just going to no mobile attacks, maybe. Even. I'll have to look that up. Uh, it could be straight up assaults, but... Uh, we're going to have to take out this road bump, and then we're going to have to go here and open that, and that could easily take two turns, uh, or more. We may not be able to get it open in time. Um, and I'm hoping I can still defend with this stack, hold the Fayed Pass with this. Not counting that. That's what? One, two... Oh, man, that's just five. So I could potentially have up to eight, but that's just not that great. Um, I mean, that's okay. It's pretty good, actually, but I'd rather have, like, 12, right? You'd rather have just more. So yeah, and the weather's clear, so we do have the shot of getting access air power. I don't think anybody's gonna do interdictions over here because uh, maybe the allies will. I don't know, the allies could get some good effect out of interdictions because they could actually keep some of these. Well, no, they wouldn't actually because they're already out of supply, so it, it wouldn't really matter. Uh, they could do airstrikes if they wanted to. That's a possibility. I think they'd rather just use them for um, die roll modifiers. I think that's what the Germans are gonna do as well. There's just it's just too difficult right now. I could try an interdiction, but I think I need all these die roll modifiers to a lot of my stacks being out of supply. All right, so I'm gonna concoct a sort of a plan. We'll come back and we will see the results of this uh, first half of turn 31. Okay, results of that were really good. The Germans, despite having half of their attack value, half of their movement, were able to come up to that anti-tank unit here, this uh, zero to four guy. Uh, they were able to get five to one odds on him, failed their combat coordination, that became three to one. They did get a close air support roll, that really helped, and that gave them a minus two DRM, and so they were able to actually roll a one. So I've got a zero, that's defender two retreat, and that annihilated that unit there. They were able to, because they could use mobile combat, I didn't see anything saying that out of supply units could not conduct mobile combat. Uh, they were able to advance that hex, move one more, and then use their uh, advanced motorized or the motorized phase because they're all red box to move half of their already halved MA, which is going to be like one basically. So I got to move them essentially one more space. The results are is that I think next turn, I'm, I mean, I should be able to at least hopefully clear this unit next turn. Um, even though I'm only, only going to be able to summon something like 10 strength points to attack it. Um, and so that's going to be three to one odds. I mean, this could be very dicey, but hopefully I can get some good rolls. We're going to see. We're going to try to bring in a lot of planes. <laughs> We're going to try to get some good rolls on that one. Uh, otherwise, I didn't move anything else. These units stayed here to defend. Um, they're going to hold the fight pass. I don't know what the allies are going to do. I imagine they're going to try to begin. They're going to have to try to take out this unit here. It is disrupted, and uh, they can probably bring more force to bear, and I think they're just going to try to wipe that stack out if they can, and then bring all their force to bear on the fight pass. 
uh, for the next two turns. So I think that's going to be the Allies' plan, is just surround that disrupted unit, bring as much force, and hopefully um, get a nice result, knock them out. They are disrupted right now. I don't think they're out of supply, right? Yeah, so they're just disrupted. So they just lose a uh, minus one. So anyway. Uh, or minus two, I believe, for being disrupted. Um, eh, I'll double check that. We'll know in a second when I come back and I'll tell you the results of the Allied turn. Okay, turns are going really fast now because it's pretty uh, easy to see what the objectives are and since we're running out of time. Uh, allies were able to come down here and push the uh, Axis units off the uh, Victory Hex Mountain there. They were also able to get an armor attrition result, which meant that the even though they, did, they had a defender retreat result, the Axis stack had to take an armor loss. Um, which is super not fun for them. And that meant their Italian tank blew it and they're kind of gonna be out of supply now and they had to run up there because that was the only clear path they could get through. They did have to do an uh, ER check because they passed through an empty, uh, an empty hex that had an enemy zone of control. They passed that just barely, so they didn't lose another devastating step, otherwise that would've been terrible. Allies then proceeded to motor down here because the idea is we want to get around here on this road because it is a mountain hex, so with our armor we have to come in through road hexes. Uh, they came down here, moved the artillery there. Uh, so yeah, it's moving along quite nicely. We're here at the end of the Allied turns. Let's go ahead and just start getting things ready for the next turn. I know, for example, that all these units are going to go out of supply. This guy's going to go out of supply, which I think means that artillery goes to zero. That's unfortunate. They lose their disruption marker because they're not in enemy zone of control, but they stay out of supply, or they go into out of supply. And even this lowly old French unit here is going to go into emergency supply. I don't think it's going to live for very long, but it's it's doing uh, human's work as it is. And also, yeah, just remembered if we have an out supply marker, that means this guy goes to zero, and he stays at zero. All right, so. Gonna, if the axes hold on, it's going to be by the skin of their teeth. It literally is. Uh, if they're going to have to get some very lucky rolls here. They're going to have to get some very good attacks to hopefully open up the road uh, back to their unit here. And even this unit's about to take some very serious punishment. So I'm going to have to really decide <laughs> if I can really even split my forces given how badly out of supply they are. Let's go ahead and roll for the weather for next turn. Still clear. Man, we have rolled all clear. That has been very good for the Axis in some ways, because really rain or mud would just destroy any hope they have. Although it would slow down the Allies, so maybe they would kind of like some bad weather, but it's just not happening for them right now. So yeah, Axis, not looking good, don't have a lot of options. Probably going to have to aim for just holding the pass. I don't think there's any way we're going to be able to take these other Hexos, not really possible. We've already lost one armor step, we can't lose. If we lose four more, then uh, we've lost the scenario completely, even if we take Fayed Pass. So now the Axis are just going to have to come back at the beginning of turn, what is this, 1 a.m. and uh, see what we can do over here, if there's any hope to knock that st uh, to knock this French unit out of the way. Um, it's possible, it's possible. We can surround it with zones of control and push it away and we'll see what's up, but maybe, maybe, it's going to be very tough. Um, thinking the air situation for this next turn, I think we're just going to, again, not do interdictions and just kind of focus on getting those DRM modifiers pretty good idea. It didn't really work last turn. The Germans got theirs, the Allies did not, and then I realized that the Germans couldn't use their other one because there was no HQ unit close enough for this uh, stack on the mountain to effectively use close air support. So that was uh, my bad. You gotta keep your HQ unit close. I'm learning a lot of little lessons. I knew that from the Rhodes games, but I just sort of forgot about it. And uh, I would say the biggest lesson I've taken away from playing this is that it's like the Rhodes games, but the extra movement that the motorized uh, red box units guys get, um, it's devastating, especially on the open plane. You can really outmaneuver, you can really punch holes and go through, and that just wasn't necessarily the case with the Rhodes series. So anyway, I'm gonna take a little break here. We're gonna come back, and when I do that, we're gonna do the 1 a.m. turn. I think we're just gonna put all these together into one long video because it's it's getting really short, and I don't think I need to have separate uploads for these kind of turns. So hopefully gonna try to wrap it up today. So yeah, moving on to uh, 1 a.m. Axis. Okay, Axis uh, managed to, even though they failed their combat coordination role, they did get their close air support roles, and thus were able to get a minus two to a one to one assault combat, which is the worst. Uh, came up with a defender retreat result, and that meant that this guy got to run away. He didn't have to take a step loss though, because he could escape through here, and he chose to move two hexes, so he went there. And then I sent a unit in here to hold the Axis supply line. I need to mark all these dudes out of supply. 
And then I sort of spread out my tanks on the motorized phase so that I could um, keep this unit from on its turn rolling back down and cutting off supply once again. So I think I've set it up so there's no way it can, because it has to stop whenever it enters a zone of control. So I don't think there's a way it's going to be able to sort of sneak around and, and cut through there again. Um, at least I don't see a way it can do that. It might be able to, but I'm pretty sure I did the best I could right there. Uh, we did split our forces here, and I brought most of the forces over here to help defend, or at least some of my other units, uh, to help bring the stack up to even greater strength. Uh, I was not able to cut it off, so they are going to be able to get like a double attack here. We're just going to have to see if we can hold out uh, supply. We'll be at least reopen for these guys next turn, so maybe that can help drive off. And also for this guy, he'll be able to trace supply too. Um, so yeah, we're just going to have to figure it out. Maybe I can do supply. I have to see if I can trace supply over mountain hexes. I don't think I can. And plus, he'll probably be able to block it off anyway. But anyway, so we've given ourselves a fighting shot as the axis of winning this. Although we have lost one step, we can't lose very many more of artillery or armor. So I think the idea here is I'm going to take this stack, and it's going to come up here. In fact, we'll just go ahead and... Um, there's just not much to do for this turn. So I'll go ahead and just bring these guys up, because they really need to attack if I pass together on the roads. Uh, there's not really a question of being able to do that. I could maybe overrun this guy though Maybe No, because I think it would take too much movement and I don't really care because he's already out of supply which I need to mark too So he doesn't even get to really do anything I mean if I do kill the artillery unit it does count towards the steps I need to get rid of but I'd rather spend my power actually attacking uh, The stack so we just we know it's gonna be able to go there. It has plenty of movement um, are these guys all artillery? Yeah, they're totally cool artillery. They're holding that mountain because I don't want them to retake that or cut my supply in the rear here. And we'll bring this guy up. He's going to just go at one, two, and three, and four, five. We'll just... One, two, three. Yeah, that works. And I'm being really just kind of hasty now. There's just no... I mean, the attacks are pretty self-explanatory what we have to do. It's pretty easy. So we know these guys get halved, right? I don't know about artillery yet, we'll roll for that. So it's five, six automatic points. We know that's halved and rounded down, so it's seven attacking points so far. Actually, right where you can see it, huh? that'd be nice. So seven from that stack. Oops, I probably shouldn't have covered that armor, that's okay. And this is the one that always, I should calculate this out, but I, because it's the big Mac Daddy. So those automatically happen, that's four, and then the rest of these, four, eight, 13, 14, 15, so that's seven again when you round down. So that's 11, so we have so far 18 points, and in here they have, oh, let's rearrange these guys. Not much is what they have, let me put, well, they do have enough to be a pain though, and you don't lose defense when you're out of supply, you just lose attack. So, and you lose the R ratings though, so that's pretty nice. All right, let's see what we got here. Three, four, five, six, twelve. Oh god, that's really, really nasty. God, that's super nasty. They have twelve there, even though they're out of supply. Hmm. So 18 to 12, I'm seeing not very good odds. That is three to two odds though, I take it if we do an assault. I don't know if mobile has a three to two odds column. Mobile does, okay. So we could get three to two odds. That's not terrible. Um, uh, yeah, so we're gonna have to do it. I mean, I have to attack. We can't just like not attack. I have to open this pass up. I guess technically this dude, no, because the unit there, he technically would get his supply back, I guess, if I don't knock him out of this, and I should have maybe have attacked that, but that would only give me one. See, if I split my power and attack that, then I would only have one com ability to really attack that hex and knock them out, and I really just need to knock them out. Um, I don't think they can do a strong po or a combat refusal. I believe being out of supply lets, keeps you from doing that. Yeah, you can't do a combat refusal, reaction movement, or overrun. I could try maybe a no retreat. I believe I need um, a strong point or something. Yeah, I have to have a strong point or a mine hex there, and I have neither, so I can't do a no retreat either. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if it's just smarter for me to go after those stacks. 
and just try to kill dudes. So it'd be like, what is this, and, it looks like it goes through clear there, it says and one, and two, and three, three and four, and, and they could just start attacking those guys, I guess. That actually could be pretty good. They could do, they could wreck some havoc there, I guess. Or is it just smarter to attack that? <laughs> Let me think about that. When I come back, we'll figure that out. Okay, so allies decided to go ahead and attack this uh, central stack because it was thinking three to two odds isn't great, but all we really need to do is get a defender retreat. And, uh, and then things got worse. We failed our combat coordination check, right? So then we went to three to four odds. Uh, I did have minus two ER differential. They got a plus two for the mountain, however, so it evened out, and I rolled a two. So, I mean, very, very lucky there. Um, able to get a defender retreat result. And um, actually, that was a defender retreat with an armor attrition, so I think they're going to lose a step even. That might be really dope. I think that's what I said last time, isn't it? So I'd hate to contradict myself here, but let's go ahead and just look that up to make sure. All right. Uh, mini attacker must be armor. Oh, so wait, it was the other way around. It's just three attacker. So back here, this Italian guy didn't die. So technically, I'm glad I didn't go after the tank. So I guess he didn't die. Turns out he didn't die. Turns out I would have had to have lost an armor step that attacked that attacked that guy. So technically, I would have lost an armor step somewhere around here, which uh, sucks. I probably would have, well, it wouldn't have really affected the combat because I did get a, um, I did get some artillery. It wasn't enough for a shift, but it would have been more than enough to uh, make up for those that point differential loss. So I guess it's not technically terrible. And then they also took another um, armor attrition on that. So we'll go ahead and just reduce this bad boy. So yeah, it got a lot of weaker there, but um, was able to take the pass. Uh, they had to retreat, so they, that stack went over here. They did lose uh, anti-air unit, heavy anti-air, because it was orange circle and it could not retreat, so it was gone. And um, yeah, so that was pretty good. Actually, really, really lucky attacks here. I'm kind of doing unorthodox attacks. It might have been a lot smarter for the allies who said go for tank steps and just start trying to get rid of those. But now we have the pass. Um, they will be back in supply, it looks like. But we have the pass now. So I guess I will be re using my motorized phase to uh, bring some more additional support here. I don't even know what I have holding this right now. Probably pretty good stuff. Uh, four, eight, ten... 11, yeah, and it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I could put one more point in or shift some guys around and and uh, do that kind of stuff. So that's actually really, really good. And I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of move guys around and then we will enter the very last turn. And obviously, if the Axis cannot uh, dislodge uh, those units, which I don't think they're going to be able to do, honestly. I don't think they're going to be able to do it because you have to... You can only attack with armor through hexi into mountain hexides through a road. So the only access point is going to be here. They can't really sneak around here and get back here like they did, especially if I leave some forces there. So even if they're all going to come out of uh, being out of supply here because we've reopened the route. Oh, I didn't move this guy. I guess I could have moved him. He wasn't going to be able to do anything, right? One, two. Yeah, because he was going to get stuck in this thing. He wasn't going to be able to go one, two, and three, and... Four and yeah, he wasn't gonna be able to like slip through. So actually, wait, four and I think does not. So that could have been five. He actually would have been able to cut that off. Oh, that's interesting. I could have done that for sure. So if he'd have been here, sorry, so I'm doing this real quick. I didn't realize this. One, two, and I gotta go three and here, four and. That would have just been five, because the guy has no Zoc. Oh, but they had units. Um, no, no, he would have been able to do that. So, yeah, he would have been able to go there. That would have meant the only place these guys could have gone would have been one. Oh, they might have been screwed. Oh, they would have to go in here, but I don't think they can stack and do that. So they would have been in bad shape. Because they can't retreat into a mountain hex side without a road, and there definitely is a mountain in there. 
Oh, so yeah, that actually really that actually might have killed this entire stack. Or enough, I'm going to have to sacrifice enough points just to go there. Wait, so they were attacking me. He was here, he was here. I had to go through there. Yeah, so he can stop here, but I'm going to have to lose, because that's a three value, I believe. Artillery unit. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah. Because of stacking rules, I'm going to have to get rid of up to three points, or just two points, really, because I got rid of that one unit already died. Oy, oy vey. It's going to have to be this anti-air. Well, that even more greatly reduces our ability, because honestly... I think that's pretty much the end. I don't think the Axis are going to be able to really come back on this one. Because now when we go to the next turn... Oh, he should be down here too, I guess. Under that. So when we come back to the next turn... So... I wasn't able to keep that unit from being really annoying. And it was able to come over there. So it would have been able to cut off supply. I couldn't keep it from doing that. Just not able to do that. Um, and I couldn't... See, I couldn't leave gaps here. Because if they had just gotten in this hex, I still would have been able to project zone of control and take that over, right? Uh, or cut that supply off. So he came here. That meant that when this unit had to retreat, he couldn't go through Mountain Hex. This was the only available Hex, so it had to stop there. Um, I wonder if it would have tried to... I wonder if it takes an ER loss. I don't think it does. It's already in bad enough trouble, though. And then it had to lose a unit to meet stacking requirements because we can't just have overstack. Although, honestly, I'd probably just rather lose... You know what? I'd rather just lose that artillery. That artillery is kind of dumb. I don't know why I'm trying to save, like, an artillery thing that's useless to me when it's out of supply. Uh, okay. Still, not looking good. So we know that they're going to stay out of supply because they can't get supply from anywhere. And these guys will come back into supply, so they magically lose these markers. They suddenly are like, we have fuel. Um, but it's not going to be enough. I mean, they're not going to be able to sneak around, I don't think, and come in and attack that way. Maybe they could. I don't know. They could probably do a lot. Let's see. But how many points is this? We're talking 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, um, 14, but they're half through mountains. That's 7. This is already like 3 points. So, yeah, I mean, this is already really well defended. We got 5, 6, and 9 plus that artillery. Yeah. It's going to be a desperation attack. That's what it's going to have to be. If we can't get them, if they can't retake it, they're done here. So I'm going to come right back, and then we will see whether or not the Axis were able to do that. Okay, after looking at it, I'm going to call it, and we're going to give this one to the Allies. Uh, it was the last turn. We just started the 1 p.m. turn, but uh, weather roll came up uh, clear. <laughs> so I was like, oh, well, maybe the Germans still have an option or a uh, possibility of victory, but they can't. Um, it would take, even from this furthest away space, it would take something like nine movement points to get here. So that means only these two could get there. That's only going to be six. That's three points. And the most I can get here is five. So the most I could throw at this combat is eight points of, uh, of strength. And they already have something like 13 or 14. So I would, I would be one to two odds or two. Yeah. And that's without me even taking in combat coordination rolls. It would have to be an assault. Um, yeah, and in fact, if I fail the combat coordination, it automatically becomes impossible. And in fact, I don't even think I, could, I would have to get a... And I won't be... Yeah, it's not possible. I'm going to call it the Germans are not going to have an ability to do that. They almost held out. If they could have just held out that one last attack, they might have been able to keep themselves from retreating. But the Allies, very daring moves, were able to come through, cut the supply down here. That was a huge move to come down here and... Um, and really take that mountain, cut this off, and really just throw the entire force you remember into disarray. That was just that was probably the move of the game. If I was going to do that right, the play of the game. Um, that's what that was. I guess lessons if I had any to learn, it is really look out for your supply lines in the rear. Obviously, this is a war game that shouldn't be talked about a whole lot. That should be just obvious. It's kind of like when sports people say the team that scores the most wins. Well, that's very true. Uh, the team that stay keeps their troops fed and supplied wins generally. Uh, and here, I definitely, because of that extra motorized movement, I'm still getting used to that. I left some very holes, open holes, or just narrow gaps, and that was just too much. Um, 
you could imagine him with this whole board if we were, you know, if you had a campaign. This is a very nice small sampling. I really enjoyed this whole scenario. I think that was a little fun way to get into this game. I think it was perfect size, perfect area, and a good seesaw back and forth and ability to really try out all the the elements of the game, right? You really do get a fact that you can do all the, the combat checks, the DRMs, you really get into the flow. I think this is a great introductory scenario for Kasserin. You can imagine though, when you look at this entire map, that when you play the campaign game, and you're talking about really open areas with some very nice natural borders. I mean, you can see some choke points, of course. It's what Fayyid's all about. It's what the Kasserin campaign's all about. But man, you could just see, like, coming up here, just open road, open terrain. If you got a breakout, and you could just, you could wreck havoc. So I think I've got a lot of the board covered up. It's a quite nice large map. I think I showed you that in the beginning. I have all my forces out, my PlayStation controller. Hello, PlayStation. Um, but yeah, so I can imagine you play a larger game that really focusing on that is much more important. In the Rhodes games, I found the terrain is really exciting. I like the maps and I enjoy playing that kind of puzzle of figuring out where your units go. Um, that really is fun for me when I do that. But this game, it's much more open terrain, so it's less puzzle-like, although there are certainly puzzles with all the road movement and trying to sneak around mountains and trying to get your, uh, you know, surround on. Um, you, it's, you're more likely to be punished for not securing your rear area, shall we say. Anyway, so that was Kasserin. That was a lot of fun. That was really just the fight pass scenario. I think this is a super great game. I, I enjoy Vance Von Boy's games, so I knew I was going to like this. I enjoyed playing this. I think the larger one would just be a, a hoot to play. I don't know if I have the time or wherewithal to do that because I move slowly. I enjoy these kind of games. Um, that are smaller in nature like that, right? And I feel like that's why I like this scenario a lot. It was really fun. I got lots of cool tanks to play with, some infantry, some cool self-propelled artillery, which, you know, oh, yeah, and that useless unit. <laughs> and Mr. Useless right there. I mean, he wasn't useless. He's an anti-tank. I just don't get why we'd have a zero attack silhouetted unit. Anyway, um, so yeah, that was Kasserin. Lots of fun. I don't know what I'll play next, but uh, I just wanted to get this out because it, it was fun. I might try to get OCS. I did get Sicily too. Uh, and I might try some of the smaller scenarios there because I, I did get into OCS a little bit, played some Burma, not on camera, that was fun. So anyway, there we go, Castron, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.